Hey guys, Kaiser here, and today we're going to be doing a new segment I like to call Deck of the Day. Um, today, the Deck of the Day is going to be the second place winner at the Pro Tour Return to Ravnica, um, played by Yuya Watanabe. It is a Jun deck, and if I'm not mistaken, somebody else from his group is actually play played the same deck, but uh, he managed to get second with it. Um, in this, normally I would play the first place winner of a Pro Tour, but... Um, I wasn't really a big fan of the first players, uh, of the first places deck. It was basically a giant combo deck, and I didn't think it'd be very interesting to watch me play it. It's the guy ended up winning, and I, if I remember correctly, he he never lost a match, but every match he played took. I think they said like every match took at least an hour, just because his turns were so long, and it was really ridiculous. Um, even the last game was like an hour, but uh, yeah. And today we're going to be using, like I said, a Jun deck played by Yuya Watanabe. Um, we're planning to play casual because uh, Blood Braid Elf has recently been banned in Modern, and I want to at least be able to play test the deck. And uh, so we're going to have to play casual so that we don't have to deal with that pesky little ban list. Um, I'll go ahead and look at the deck while we're waiting for a match here. Um, we have four. Oh, wait, looks like we have a match. Or just real quick, four Blood Braid Elf. Four Dark Confidant, four Death Right Shaman, three Kitchen Finks, four Tarmogoyfs. Um, real quick, three Slaughter Games. Uh, love that card. Uh, four Lilianas, and your basic Dual Land Shock Lands, all that good junk. And Rope Decay, good card. Four Lightning Bolt. And go ahead and get this started. Good. Let's tell this guy good luck. Go ahead and roll our die. We're probably going to be playing on the. <laughs> Playing first year, um, so we're gonna mull. Or we're gonna draw our initial hand, and no, we're not gonna keep this. Actually, wait, we have a land here. Does end of the battlefield tapped? This is definitely not a hand we want to keep. Um, well, maybe actually, just uh, I guess it'd be kind of fun to play with the worst case scenario here. Yeah, let's go ahead. Let's try to keep this. We'll keep. Uh, we'll go ahead and go to our main phase. Um, we're going to play Tree Top Village. Because we don't have any one drops, so we're going to go past the turn. So let's see what type of deck this guy's playing. Um, he only drew six cards. I don't know why. Um, oh, he molded my bad. Yeah, okay. So he's starting off with a swamp. And a Gold Dread Vampire. Okay, so he's probably going to be going with vampires because I would never play that card in any other deck. Um, let's see what we can do here. Uh, we can play Twilight Mire, and we're going to... Here, let's see what we can do here. Let's go ahead and... give us a green and a black. And we're going to... Yeah, let's go ahead... Uh, Kozilek Inquisition him, or Inquisition of Kozilek, make him discard a card, uh, reveal his hand, we'll, we might actually go ahead and write down what he has, real quick. And this is awkward, so he has five swamps. Uh, yeah, not going okay. Okay. And we're going to end our turn. That is uneventful. Um, this seems like something could be going on here. Um, I don't really know of any decks other than... I can only think of one deck that really benefits from having 95 swamps, and that's an EDH deck. So this might be interesting to see what type of deck he's playing here. Um, we do have the other Treetop Village, which is at least nice. Um, it looks like we're taking one. Yeah, I never, I was never, I'm never, well, I was never really a big fan of the vampires that involved having ten or less life. Felt like they took too long to get decent. Go ahead and put Treetop Village in tapped. I'm going to Treetop Village for Twilight Mire. Just go ahead and add two black, doesn't matter. And we're going to play Dark Confidant. Um, and we're going to go to main, and we're going to end. So now that we have Dark Confidant, we may be able to speed this process up a little bit. Um, we do have three tappable land now. Um, 
So we still can't go Blood Braid Elf, but we do have a card in the graveyard for Tarmogoyf. So, at least we can get things rolling here. Uh, and he's going to be playing Vampire Nighthawk. So yeah, he's definitely going for vampires. Um, let's see how this works out. And he's not going to attack. That's good. Oh, wait a minute. Control Shift D. Got a Undead's last draw. So, I draw that card. And then take no damage. I get a draw. And that's good because we get to draw a land. Too bad it's not going to. It's going to come in tapped. But that's fine for now. Go ahead and put Black Cleave Cliffs in. Uh, we're. Looks like we might go for a Tarmogoyf. Be a 1 2. Hmm. That's not the greatest. But it would be getting bigger as we go. And it looks like he's probably not playing any burn because he's probably playing one on black, it looks like. So we're going to go ahead and play it. So he's a. Uh, set the power and toughness. He's a 1 2. And we'll end. Let's see what this guy does. I don't know what he's owing about. <laughs> I didn't see when he did it, so I don't know what his reaction to what it is. Um, so we're hoping. I think one of the best things we can draw right now is a uh, fetch land or something to uh, get us another land and uh, get Tom Goyf up another card. Oops, and we're going to drag the card for Dark Confidant and to land. Look at that fetch land. We're good. And then we get to draw a card. Liliana. Okay, so we're not going to Liliana this turn. But we will fetch for a... We do have enough for us. Um, let's go ahead and get a Swamp. Let's see what type of dual string lands we have in here. A swamp Mountain. Uh, I think we can let him enter the battlefield tapped. I don't think we need it this turn, so we're going to let it enter the battlefield tapped. No shock. Now we're going to play a blood raid, blood braid elf. I'm gonna go cascade, and we're gonna cascade into a death right shaman. That's good because we just got a verdant catacombs um, in the grave, so we can ex exile that. Huh. I I I love death right too. If only I was fortunate enough fortunate enough to uh, have one in real life. Uh, I used to play Golgari, but I gave up whenever I couldn't get her hands on any of the good cards. Um, and since he only has a 1 on blocker, I think we're going to swing with Bloodbraid Elf. And we're going to set the power of toughness to a 2 3. And we're going to attack with Tarmogoyf also. Since I was smart, or not smart enough, but since I was lucky enough to not actually declare my attackers yet. And I wasn't originally going to attack with Tarmogoyf. But, uh,. So we're going to pass the turn. I've been really getting really lucky with Dark Confidant, so uh, hopefully we won't draw anything too outrageous. Uh, now that I think about it, I think Blood Braid Elf is probably one of the most expensive cards in this deck. Um, I think 4 is the max. I can't think of any 5 drops in here. Um, and if there's anything exp more expensive, or if there's anything like Blood Braid Elf, I'm still thinking 4 is the max. So we won't have to worry too much, but could always draw another Blood Braid Elf, which could suck, or anything else that's four. Using Dark Ritual, okay. Add th three. Uh, and he's gonna get a con creating vampire, or captivating vampire. I don't even know what I'm saying. So, they're gonna get plus one plus one, and he's gonna probably swing a vampire Nighthawk. And he's gonna gain three, we're gonna take three. And hopefully we can... Oh, he's not even gonna attack. Okay, so he's gonna save a blocker. Oops. Control Shift D, why do I keep forgetting this? Dark Confidant, I take one. And then we're gonna draw another Inquisition of Kozilek. We have a Thought Seize. Don't know if I'm willing to pay the two life though. Um, let's see what do we have in here. We have a land and a sorcery. Do we have any instants? Uh I might try to get another card in there. Oh, we don't have a red oh we do have a red actually. So oh dang it, Vampire just got Okay, let's see, how can we get rid of his Nighthawk here? I guess we're just going to Lightning Bolt, his Captivating Vampire. See if he has any response. If he doesn't, our Tomagoyf will go up to a 3-4, which it does. And now 
we can either go for another Tarmogoyf, which would be another 3-4, or we can try to get lucky with a Bloodbraid Elf. Um, we can make him sacrifice Ghoul Draws. Hmm. Oh, I think I know what we can do here. Let's see, we have an instant, a sorcery, and a land. What else do we not have in here? We don't have a creature in there. I could theoretically discard a Bloodbraid Elf, but that's not worth it. So we're going to actually... I'm going to go for another Bloodbraid Elf. <coughs> Once again, I'm not the greatest at this game, so... And it's less, so we're gonna bring in a Kitchen Finks. And we're gonna gain two. And that was a good one. Alright, so... We're going to... Looks like we're gonna swing... He does have Death Touch. He could kill one of our Blood Braid Elves, but... That's not too big of a loss, and that would just pump Tarmogoyf up. We've already gotten our use out of Blood Braid. So yeah, we're gonna start combat, and we're gonna swing with Tarmogoyf and the both blood braid elves to clear our attack now he can kill one of the blood braid elves like I said and oh oh he could do that too yeah I should have thought about that death touch okay so we're gonna lose Tarmogoyf whoops 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 they're still all connected okay and he's gonna take three but that does just pump up our Tarmogoyf for our second Tarmogoyf and we're going to end our turn. Um, I don't know, like, what it is, but, I mean, once again, I'm not the smartest person when it comes to this game, so I obviously might be missing something, but I never thought Persist was that great of an effect. I mean, it's kind of like the opposite of Undying, and Undying was way better. But, uh, I haven't really looked at all the Persist cards, so maybe there's a, um... Maybe there's just, like, for example, Kitchen Fangs, you gain life whenever he comes back, but he does come back weaker. <clears throat> so maybe there's some type of underlying bonus whenever they come back or join the or into the battlefield. We're going to draw another Dark Confidant. Um, we have five tappable lands. So we could play a Tarmogoyf and bring out Liliana. We could swing for pretty, we could swing pretty hard this turn. Um, that may be what we do. So we're going to go, we're going to tap this, go for a Tarmogoyf. There's four different types in there, so he's going to be a 4-5. Can't click the button here. So he's a 4-5. Now, we can go for Liliana, make us both discard a card. Um, I already have a creature in there, so I wouldn't really gain anything for Tarmogoyf. Oh, yes, what does he have? Does he have an enchantment? Um, I don't... No, 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 no. It's not that for each. So, so, even if there is three instants, it's only plus one. Yeah. Okay, so you just misread it for a second. Um, so now we can, of course, go for Liliana, which I, th I thought was going to be a good hit, or a good thing to do, but now that I think about it, I don't really... I guess discarding wouldn't be too bad for me. So we're gonna I guess we're gonna go do it. I'm um, gonna Liliana. Set counters f uh, three. We're just gonna show him the add a counter red. We're gonna go ahead and tell him to discard just in case. And we're gonna discard a Inquisition of Kozilek. Um I'm the Dark Confidant I'm thinking may help me, just I don't wanna get rid of him yet. Um so, we're going to start combat, and we're going to swing for... Oh, we can't swing with that. We're going to swing for nine. Um, if we had an extra land, we could have exiled an instant or sorcery now that we have an extra instant. So, which is, that's a good bonus of discarding a, a Inquisition of Kozilek, because we have an extra one. Oh, we have an extra sorcery, is what I'm trying to say. So, we can exile one to deal two. Um, so, that's always good. I'm hoping. I'm not really sure. I haven't. I this is actually the first time I've ever played this deck, so it's not really like I can predict what would be the best draw here. Um. Let's see. <laughs> Mono black. I don't know what irony is talking about. Um, but we'll see what happens. Uh, oh, landing phase. Ooh, is that game? Let's go ahead and Dark Confidant. He may be leaving us up for something. We're going to take one. Now we're going to draw. And we drew a Blood Braid Elf. So 
this may be game unless he has some type of control here, which I'm expecting him to have. So we're actually going to do this. This is what we're going to do. We're going to Blood Braid Elf. Cascade. Into a Thought Seize, which is actually perfect because I was just about to cast a Thought Seize. We're going to move this to bottom of library. And we're going to cast a Thought Seize on him. We lose two. And if he does have any control, oh, never mind. It looks like that's game. GG. Because we're going to start combat and we're going to attack with basically everything. And since, okay. Uh, let's go. Game two. I just say that usually because I don't want people to leave after the first game because that kind of sucks. So our sideboard's unlocked. He doesn't really have. Oh, he's class. Um. So, looks like I'm not gonna really have a match today. Um. So I guess that's the end of episode one of Deck of the Day. Um. Once again, the deck list will be in the description, and I will have the official name of. Or I will have the typed out name of uh, Yuya Watanabe. Um, and I will have the deck list, like I said. Um, you There you can look at the first place winner and why you could obviously say I didn't want to play the deck if you haven't actually, if you didn't actually watch the Pro Tour. Um, I was, I could have prepared something from the top 8 of Gate Crash, but I, I wanted to just wait until that Gate Crash is actually finished to just play the winner. Um... I've actually been researching that, uh, that, like, what they're calling a glass cannon deck, which basically was a human deck that could create an infinite loop of bringing back Huntmaster of the Fells to gain infinite life and infinite 2 2 wolves. Uh, that deck's pretty interesting, but, um, it's really easy to side against, so if we play against a serious player who has a sideboard, we might get really screwed over by that. Uh, but like I said, guys, um, I'll see you tomorrow for the next episode of Deck of the Day.